Hey guys, today I'm going to be working on a pistol prop. A long time ago I promised I would show how to make some of the uh, prop guns that I worked on for the big video project. And so today I'm making some sidearms because I have a bunch of shotguns and sniper, sniper rifle, a bunch of assault rifles, but I don't have any kind of sidearms except for some little puny like cap gun flintlock kind of thing. And so I'm going to make some Republic pistols. So this is what I typically start with. It's two scale. So I just kind of figure out how big I want it. And I make a two scale drawing on my table. And basically I use that to block out the shapes. So like the slide is going to be one shape. Um, I, I'll find a piece of stock metal that will fit that general idea and then I'll cut it into shape and uh, get it to fit. So you figure out the shapes and the depths and that kind of thing. So you do this all in layers, so like the trigger, would that be at layer zero? And then like the plates on the sides of the trigger or the handle, uh, the, that would be at layer one and layer negative one if you're looking at it flat like this with the trigger as zero. Uh, since I'm making it hollow, I won't be doing that with everything. Uh, so I'll be using some tube for some things, that way it's lighter and it's not gonna weigh 30 pounds. So I'm gonna get my pieces cut and I'm not going to show you all of that because that's extremely boring and it's literally just cutting parts. But before I start assembling it, I'll have all my pieces here on the table. I'll show you where they go and uh, I'll give you some stock sizes that you can, if you have the tools and ability, you can follow along and use this as a tutorial. Alright, I've got most of my parts cut. The rest, I really need to start building it and make them as I go. So here was, here's what we got and it looks very rough right now but believe me uh, it'll get better so this is the slide this is the main body of the gun so the slide I had to get a piece of tubing that was just big enough to fit over the main body and then I'll cut out the bottom of it so it fits over it from the top oh some drunk guy on the phone that was fun uh, anyway making tutorials during business hours that's what happens Anyway, what was I saying? So, this is the main body. This slide fits over it, so I'm going to cut out the bottom of it so it fits on there, and then I'm going to cut the ejection hole, whatever they call it, um, on the top there, and match it as closely as I can to that. And uh, this is almost like sculpting. You start out with your rough shapes, and you make it up as you go, basically. Uh, I'm going to make the... Uh, magazines first because I really need them to figure out how they're sliding in uh, this unlike the assault rifles that I made this is actually going to be a pistol that you can actually load it I mean load the fake magazines in it and which is why I'm making an extra one also I'm gonna have one with a bullet piece of bar that looks like a bullet in the top so it looks like it's fully loaded and then the other one's gonna be empty that way I can use them for changing out mags in a video or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to start with the mags and go from there. After some cleanup, these are looking pretty good.
Well, now we need to cap the ends of these tubes, weld the barrel on, and the whatever that is. Um, and then I need to make, probably this is going to be the second most complicated part, aside from the slide, is the actual handle that I can eject a slide or a uh, cartridge out of, cartridge, magazine, whatever this is, uh, that I can eject this out of. And then all the little details are easy, the trigger, the finger guard, the sights, that kind of thing. It's all pretty easy. I have my parts and I'm laying them out. Going to weld them with the clip inside so that it slides in and out but you don't want to do that without some sort of spacer i use paper because it will burn out if it gets stuck you can just burn it uh, and so i'm going to space the edges and the top or the side uh, that way when i'm done welding it even if it pulls a little bit or shrinks i'll still be able to get it out and it will still slide fairly easily Alright, while I didn't have the camera going, I added this little plate on the back uh, just as a stop so it won't slide farther down the barrel than right there. I also drilled and tapped this hole and cut this slot. So now I can put this in to keep it sliding within certain boundaries so it won't slide past that. It'll just go to that opening. Also this bolt that I put in, um, there will be a spring, or I think I'm probably going to use a rubber band it'll be easier to get in there running from this that right there through that hole and hooking onto it that way when you pull it back it snaps forward automatically I also figured out a way to lock this just a spring I didn't plan ahead to put a button here um, and so I really can't do that now also it would be good to have this be a little bit rougher, more post-apocalyptic, because that's what it's for anyway. So we have a clip spring. So you can't drop the clip, you know, all fancy-like and everything, but it works basically the same. Uh, it's just that you can't release it from up there. And that is basically it. So what I'm gonna do is tack this on and then wrap the handle so it kind of covers it somewhat. Uh, and then I have the parts for the trigger guard and the trigger itself cut. That's about it. It's uh, pretty much done. All I need to do now is put the bolt on the outside, the rubber band on the inside or spring, whatever I'm using, paint it and distress it. I'm going to do the painting and distressing video separately so you can see how to distress. And uh, that will also include additions like I did on the assault rifle props and all those other props. I added bayonets and custom scopes and all that sort of thing, decals. So. Since that's going to be in another video, comment what you want me to add to this as the customization and distressing, and I'll take some of your ideas, provided they fit and they're reasonable, and I will use them in the upcoming video on how to distress. 
I always include the customization in the distressing process because you have to do that together. Otherwise, your customized parts won't be distressed either. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much it. So uh, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, comment what you want to see me do to this. And I will see you next week.